I'm a general internist uh, who uh, trained, uh, you know, back in the 80s, uh, and then got very interested in the uh, problem of uh, early diagnosis and sort of the two sides uh, of the story. Um, and I, uh, early on at Dartmouth, I started at Dartmouth in 1990, I uh, met a young uh, radiologist who was also interested in this uh, general problem. And I, I think what caught me sort of by surprise was how sort of broad spread the, the issue was that whenever we tried to diagnose patients early, we found a whole lot more people had the disease or condition that uh, we were interested in. And so that meant all of a sudden we were treating a whole lot more people and I began to wonder whether that was really a good thing. Most people come uh, to the question of screening with the preconception that early diagnosis can only have one effect on them, benefit. And so most of my efforts has been to try to balance that equation so they understand there's two effects of, of early detection. Yes, there's a potential to help people, but there's also this known uh, downside of the process, which is involving too many people in the system, operating on too many people, giving too many people chemotherapy and radiation. Of course, the poster child for that problem has been the prostate cancer uh, screening uh, uh, our experience. And um, in many ways, because the problems were so egregious there, it, it actually helped the medical profession begin to realize, oh my gosh, there really is a balance here, and we need to think about it more carefully. A woman asking me about mammography, um, I would tell her that it's a very close call. And, and probably the first thing I'd tell her is, you know, because it's a close call, it's, it's hard to go too far wrong. I hate to raise the stakes too high, um, you know, most women who go undergo mammograms won't benefit from them and, and most won't be harmed by them uh, either. But it is a very fine balance as to whether this is a, a good thing or a bad thing to do and it involves a little bit of a value judgment. I believe there is a small, um, hard to measure uh, benefit of, of mammography. There's also an obvious uh, downside, and that's the downside that's less familiar to the public because we sort of exaggerate and have over the years exaggerated the benefits of screening, but we sort of downplayed uh, the harms. And the harm uh, in mammography is the excess detection of cancers. These are um, cancers uh, that are found by mammography, uh, they're read as cancer by the pathologist, it's not a misdiagnosis, the cells look like cancer, but in fact they never go on to cause problems. Um, and that's a new concept uh, for people and, and that's really what I spent a lot of my career uh, dealing with is that idea that we can find early cancers that meet the pathologic definition of cancers, yet never go on to cause problems. And, and that is the problem of overdiagnosis. And it makes you realize the body is a much more complex uh, 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 organism than we probably give it credit for. That we probably all have little cellular, we definitely all have cellular mutations uh, going on. Most of them get repaired. Some of us develop small cancers, but they don't go on. And yet, to be clear, some do go on. And that's what makes it such a, 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 a delicate a balance. But in the case of mammography, I think we've looked too hard. We're looking for too small uh, lesions, and it le means we're treating too many women for breast cancer. I think we could do better, actually. It's actually important for women to know that there's a debate about how much benefit mammography provides, despite the fact that we've studied over a half million uh, women in uh, randomized trials worldwide. That tells you something. If there's effect, the effect is small. Um, you, you know, we, we don't debate about the value of treating really high blood pressure. We, we, we learned that in 150 men in less than a year and a half. There's no debate about that. There's a lot of debate about mammography because the effect, if it exists, is very small. My best guess is it, 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 we have to screen about 2,500 women for a period of 10 years for one, possibly two, to avoid a breast cancer death. Now, I'm not belittling that. For those women, that's a big win. But it becomes very relevant to ask the question, what happened to the other 2,499? In this country, over a 10-year course of annual mammography, 
about half, you know, 1,000, 1,200, will have a false positive exam. That, that, that they'll be worried about cancer, they'll be told there's something abnormal, and about half of those will go on to have a biopsy, and some of them will never have the whole thing put to rest. They will feel they have abnormal uh, breasts. And, and that's very anxiety producing, and that's also familiar to many uh, women, that problem of false positives, because you know, so many women are undergoing mammography and people know women who've had abnormal mammograms and worry about them. That's the familiar harm. The unfamiliar harm is somewhere between 5 and 15 will be treated for cancer that will never, was never destined to bother them. Treated meaning they'll have a lumpectomy uh, or a mastectomy, they'll be radiated and they'll receive chemotherapy. For an abnormality whose natural history was not to grow and cause symptoms or death. I can't tell you the right thing to do there. It's a balance. But I think the one thing we can all agree on is we ought to tell both sides of the story. And that's what I've been trying to do, at least tell women both sides of the story. It's very hard for doctors to describe this balance in a clinic visit. There's so many things that need to go on in a clinic visit. And everyone knows that time with a doctor is a very short. It's probably too short, uh, the amount of time patients have with doctors. So I think it's very important to do uh, an education effort at a more uh, global level. And some of that's being done through shared decision-making videos and so forth. Um, and that's part of what I'm trying to do in writing a book and writing articles for the public, is to help them understand some of these issues before uh, they see the doctor. Uh, because quite frankly, the doctor may not understand all the issues because he or she has covering so many different bases, uh, screening is a complex issue and they, they may not understand it. Um, so I, I think we need to work on sort of more public and, and, uh, uh, education efforts just so they understand the, the balance going on. And I think to some extent that's happening. Um, my read of the general public uh, now is much different than it would have been uh, 10 or 15 years ago. I think there's a general growing recognition that, that while medical care can do some very good things for people, there are also places where we've gone overboard. And one place we've probably gone overboard is in general with early detection. I, I think the future of screening is we're going to be more careful about it. And I think that's a good thing. I think there's now a more a general understanding of a certain level of skepticism about the value of finding things before patients experience uh, any symptoms or problems from them. But there are, so I, I think in the academic community of medicine, there's now much more healthy skepticism about the general problem. That's my feeling. Um, but I, I, I got to be clear, there are strong commercial forces always out there looking for new ways to label people as disease because that starts a, a treatment cascade and, and, and it's a great way to make a lot of money. The reality is it, it, it's much easier to find a new patient to use your therapy on than it is to develop a better therapy.